Welcome to another tech video. Today we're going to be looking at a Wi-Fi 6 access point from Netgear. So this is a Netgear business grade access point, Wi-Fi 6. And we're going to couple that together with another Netgear product. So this is uh, a Netgear PoE Plus 8 port uh, network switch. So along with that and the Netgear access point, we're going to run through the setup and have a quick look at it. It's our first time we've seen one of these, so it'll be interesting for us as well as you guys. So before we start with the unboxing of this, I'm just gonna describe the setup that we got. So what we've got here is a Netgear GS308PP PoE plus switch. So this has got 30 watts per port <clears throat> of power and we need PoE plus to drive this network access point. So if we have a look at the front, um, we can see that uh, we've got eight ports and they're all PoE plus ports. Um, in port eight, we've got our internet link coming in. So this is just a straight internet link from uh, another switch that we got. And the reason that we're doing this is because we, we don't have a PoE switch uh, as our main switch. So we're daisy chaining this one off just to get this set up. Um, the activity light green shows its gigabit. Uh, the light on the right, um, which is unlit on this port, means it's drawing PoE power. So because it's not PoE, um, that's why that light is off. But uh, the green light is stating that it's gigabit. So that's the setup. Um, this cable here then goes off to another switch which just joins our, our LAN uh, private network. So in here we've got our Netgear WAX214-100. So this is a Wi-Fi 6 business grade access point apparently. Um, it's our first one that we've, uh, we've seen. So um, we're gonna take you along for the ride on how to set it all up. So in the box, we get our installation guide in various languages and in the box itself, quite nice, uh, quite a nice little unit. So we've got our access point. Nothing special about that at the moment. In the box here, uh, we've probably got some mounting hardware because it doesn't come with a power adapter. So if you need a power adapter, you've got to buy that separately. Uh, and what is this? This looks like um, Okay, yep, so that's that's some mounting hardware basically where you can slide that in the back. We won't be using that um, Okay, so let's get it removed from the packaging That's a nice matte finish <clears throat> And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a patch lead and we're gonna connect that into port one. We can pick any port, they're all the same. They're all 30 watts. So we're gonna plug that into there. And then we're going to read the instructions on the bottom here. It says notice to configure, connect to SSID, config only and browse to aplogin.net and refer to the installation guide for more instructions. Okay, so let's remove that sticker from there. Fill that off and then we can connect our network cable that just plugs into the underside and that should we should see some lights should power up which it does so we've got a nice little orange light there that's always good news okay so the next thing we want to do is we want to go in and have a look at the configuration once that's started up so it's still starting there. What we want to see is a network light, I presume. And on the switch itself, we can see that we've got two green lights. So we've got gigabit connectivity on the left and PoE plus on the right. <clears throat> okay, so that's had enough time really to start up. So let's now have a look and see if we can see it. Okay, so we haven't managed to find it on the network. However, we can see that we've got uh, a couple of new IPs here. So we're gonna get, see if we can access dot one seven three. Uh, 
and hopefully this is the uh, the access point which it is okay so it wants us to create a new password so we're going to do that and we're going to confirm it we're going to give it an ssid name so we're going to call this uh, test Wi-Fi one and um, we're going to give this a temp one two three four five six seven eight nine naught we're going to tick the box and then we're going to apply that configuration okay so that's the device rebooted so we're going to log back in Okay, here we go. So we can see all of our configuration here. Thinks we're in Germany, so we need to go in and run through all of the uh, settings and get it configured. So here's our configuration option that we should have seen, but we couldn't. And there's our test Wi-Fi that we've just created. Click on connections. Shouldn't be anyone connecting nope and a real-time overview okay that's quite good right so let's go into the network basics i'm going to click on network basic and we're going to leave it as dhcp and link local address for ipv6 spanning tree we're going to leave that to disabled wireless configuration we're going to go in here we're going to change our country and region to united kingdom so that should enable the system to go off, find any other Wi-Fi networks in the, right, in the area and choose the best channel for 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Okay, that's got it this time. So let's go back to our Wi-Fi. Okay, so it looks like we can update our security settings. So if we go to, let's go to edit. Client isolation, no. That's fine. Band steering, okay, so we want to enable band steering. And what that does is that force it, or it tries to push clients onto the five gigahertz network. Uh, in terms of security, we want to try and find WPA3, so we're going to select WPA2 and WPA3 personal. We're going to leave our passphrase as it is. Don't need radius. Don't need ACLs, don't need traffic shaping. So we're just going to click on save again. We're going to apply that again. Oh, can't believe you have to reboot every single time. Okay, there we go. Now we can go back to our Wi-Fi. We don't need the management interface anymore, so we can disable that. I'm, gonna, oh, I'm not gonna click on save just yet. Yeah, all right, I will. Okay, and now we can go, let's go and have a look at the management, SNMP settings, we don't need any of that. CLI settings, we're gonna leave that enabled. SSH is disabled and email alerts we're going to leave empty at the moment. Time zone we're going to synchronize okay automatically get date and time that's fine so we're going to actually change that to uk.pool.ntp.org and we're going to set our time zone to England and we're going to enable daylight saving No, we're not, because it hasn't pre-populated it, so I'm not going to bother with that. Apply that. Okay, so there we go. Let's have a look at Wi-Fi scheduler. We're not going to be scheduling uh, automatic reboots or scheduling when Wi-Fi is enabled or disabled. Let's go to tools. Okay, so we've got ping, tracer, NS lookup, speed test, and the LED lights. Uh, account, that will be the name and password, so that's fine. Let's go to firmware. Okay, so there's no automatic check on this. 
So what we're going to do is we will go off to, uh, let's go and have a look at Netgear's website and see if we can find the firmware and get that downloaded. WAX214. Okay, so we've got a new version of the firmware available, 2112. So let's download that. That all looks fine, so I think we're good to, uh, good to update that now. Let's see if that works. Okay, so that's worked. Device is now rebooting. And there we have it we're back in action. So let's log back in. Okay, so now we've got our new firmware version. Let's go off and do a quick speed test. Mm. Okay, so we can't do that. <clears throat> Let's just do it via Google. First of all, we want to join the Wi-Fi, don't we? So let's wait and see if it appears. Test Wi-Fi 1. That's us. So 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, naught. I think that was right. Okay, so that's that. And let's go and get a speed test underway. So there we have it. So on the service we're running, we've got 200 meg, but on this Wi-Fi adapter that we're using on this machine, we never get above uh, 145. So um, that seems to be all okay. We can now go in and have a look at our connections because we should see us on here. There we are on five gigahertz, so that's okay. Let's have a look real time. We can see where the load was, 3%, three, three so that's nothing. And traffic, let's get another speed test going and then we should be able to see that as well. And there we go, so we've got our inbound and our outbound. So we're on a Virgin Media connection. Uh, it's obviously peak time, but this should be around about 19, I would expect to see that. Okay, 12. So intermittent results so far. But I'm gonna put that down to the ISP, right. So that concludes our setup and testing. Um, relatively straightforward and easy to do so um, in terms of throughput probably we need to get it on a proper customer site and do some more testing with this but so far the results are certainly promising and um, uh, Wi-Fi 6 clients let's have a look let's see what it is on the phone let's see if we can get it joined on the phone because that will tell us whether it's actually the device or the access uh, the wi-fi dongle that we've got on our pc okay so that's joined now let's do a speed test from my phone there you go so it's the wi-fi dongle on the pc so we've got 212 download and 13.4 meg upload So if you found that video useful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, just like to say thanks for coming along to run through the configuration with us and we'll see you in the next one.